It's been more than two weeks since a shooting spree in Austin and San Antonio left six people dead. As KXAN investigator Matt Grant reports, the suspect was known to law enforcement, but may not have been on the radar of intelligence analysts tasked with trying to prevent the very thing that happened. Almost immediately, the suspect opens fire. I'm hit! I'm hit! At the time, police didn't know the person shooting was Shane James, the suspect connected to six murders that day. I mean, obviously now we know that he was a very serious threat and was involved in a number of incidents that nobody knew at the time. The Bear County Sheriff's Office was aware James had mental health problems and a record that included domestic violence and assault. Last year, he cut off his ankle monitor and was considered a fugitive. It's unclear if these red flags put him on the radar of analysts tasked with preventing the next mass shooting. Law enforcement can't stop the bad guys if they don't know who they are. With the help of Chuck Norris, Governor Greg Abbott has sought to promote and expand the state's suspicious activity reporting system, I Watch Texas, run by the Texas Department of Public Safety. It is everyone's responsibility to keep Texas safe. Anonymous tips funnel into more than a half dozen fusion centers across the state, staffed with local, state, and federal law enforcement. After the mass shooting in Uvalde, the governor sent this letter calling on DPS, the Texas Education Agency, and the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board to make iWatch widely known and easily accessible. But those education agencies could only point to a single memo promoting the program to district staff, like this one the TEA sent in August 2022. TEA said it mentioned the program in a monthly call with superintendents last August and discussed the program during regional site visits. Now, new data shows while iWatch tips overall are the lowest since 2019, this year seen the highest number of school-related tips since 2018 the year the mobile app was launched. I think that this data potentially is indicative of the messaging, the consistent messaging um, that has been pushed nationally and in our state. If you see something, say something, and that's a good thing. Kathy Martinez Prather is director of the Texas School Safety Center at Texas State University. She says it takes time to create a culture of vigilance, but cautions the numbers lack context because we don't know how many tips actually lead to an arrest. One of the most important things that um, we're trying to push is that districts don't become complacent. But it's also something that districts can't do alone. This requires communities getting involved and speaking up as well. We were met with a circle of confusion trying to get answers about whether Shane James was ever reported to iWatch. A spokesperson for the Bear County Sheriff's Office, the lead agency in the case, told me they don't know what iWatch is. They referred us to San Antonio Police, which manages the Southwest Texas Fusion Center. But they referred us to DPS, who referred us back to the investigating agencies. Austin Police did not respond. Matt Grant kicks in and investigates. In a statement, the governor's office called iWatch critical, saying DPS considers every tip submitted a success because those reports can reveal threat patterns or result in early intervention. The governor's office says it will continue to work with the legislature to expand community and school safety initiatives. Last year, DPS told us it doesn't track the number of arrests made from iWatch tips. We asked if that is still the case and are waiting to hear back. Well, the governor's office points to three examples of iWatch tips it considers a success. Two weeks ago, school districts across the state were emailed bomb threats. The tips helped identify possible connections to other states. On October 1st, a tip was sent in from law enforcement about a school shooting threat to Uvalde High School and Texas A&M University. That led to a suspect out of state who was federally indicted last month for making interstate threats. And in September 2021, a tip was sent in about someone making threats in a chat room. Law enforcement was able to trace the user to a city near Corpus Christi and discover the suspect shot and killed his family. He died by suicide when officers arrived. Investigators found a large quantity of firearms and ammo and say there was evidence that he was planning a school shooting that day.